Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Children's Storytime. My name is Murad, and I'm going to teach you about a different prophet today, inshallah. As you know, the last two times we spoke about who? The first was Adam alayhi salam. The second was Nuh alayhi salam. And we said Nuh alayhi salam was a prophet or a messenger? He was a prophet and a messenger, yes. So after Nuh alayhi salam, things started all over. Because you remember what we said yesterday? We said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this whole world flood and the only people that survived were Nuh alayhi salam and the believers that were with him and all of the animals that came with them. So, Ibrahim alayhi salam was a prophet and a messenger as well. And he came after Nuh alayhi salam by many, 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 many years. So, Ibrahim alayhi salam was born to a father that was not a believer. You know why? Do you remember what happened to the people after Adam? Yes, they kept worshiping Allah and then eventually they built statues for the righteous people there. Then they eventually started making dua and asking the statues to help them. And then they started making sujood and worshiping these statues, these idols of theirs, right? So after Nuh alayhi salam, the same thing happened because you know what? The people just don't learn. So they went back to worshiping these idols that don't help them. But one day, a young boy whose name was Ibrahim, he started thinking. He looked at the stars and he looked at the sky. He looked at the sun and the moon. He looked at things around him and he started to wonder. I wonder who the creator of all of this is. Where did all of this come from? And he was a little boy, maybe your age. He was a little boy and he just had questions. And they were good questions as well because what he saw his people do was worship these idols and it never made sense to Ibrahim alayhi He was a young boy but he had a big brain, alhamdulillah. So Ibrahim alayhi salam stood up, you know, woke up one day and then he started thinking and reflecting. And when the sun set, he looked at the stars. He said, wow, these stars are so beautiful. That's my God. I think the star made everything. And then the stars disappeared and the moon came out. And when the moon came out, he said, oh no, forget the stars. The moon is much bigger. This is my God. And then he waited until dawn. And when the sun came out, he's like, wow, that's my God. That's much bigger. And then when the sun set, he said, you know what? None of these things can be God. Only God can be God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He created everything around us. We cannot see Him, but He can see us. And He tells us what to do and how to do it because He made us. And He knows us better than we know ourselves. So when He came to this conclusion, He said, hey, I have to teach my people a lesson. Right? And this is what any person who knows the truth does. They stand up for it and they call to it. Okay? So that's exactly what Ibrahim did. He went and he told his people, why don't you believe in God, the creator of these idols, the creator of you, the creator of the sun, the moon, the stars and the sky, the creator of everything. They said, no, no, we worship these idols because our parents and our grandparents and our great-grandparents, they were doing it, so 
uh, were doing it too. He said, but it doesn't make sense. They're only idols. They're rocks, they're stones, they're pieces of wood. Look at them. They don't help, they don't hear, they don't see. But they didn't understand. They're like, look, little boy, just get out of here. Okay, stop talking about our gods and leave us alone. So Ibrahim, السلام, he went to sleep and he was thinking. He's like, what can I do to prove to these people that their gods don't do anything? They're just sitting there doing nothing. They don't move, they don't see, they don't hear, they don't feel. So he thought, hey, tomorrow what I'm going to go do is I'm going to enter their place where all the place where all the idols were and I'm going to break all of them so he went and he broke all the idols and destroyed them he broke it one piece at a time but he left one big one see the biggest one he just left it alone you know why you're gonna find out in a little bit so when he went back home to sleep, everybody woke up the next day in the morning. <gasps> Our gods, what happened to them? Our poor gods. And then it, they said, who did this? Who could have possibly did this? Some of the people said, we heard a little boy talking about us, you know, asking us why we're worshiping them yesterday. It might be him. So they said, okay, bring him over. We're going to ask him. So when Ibrahim came, they told him, hey, Ibrahim, did you do this to our gods? He said, why don't you ask the big one? Maybe the big one saw who did it. So they looked at him. They said, you know they can't see. He said, maybe the big one heard it then. He said, you know the big idol can't hear either. He said, then why do you worship something that can't see or hear? It's defenseless. All of your gods can't even defend themselves. But my God, who created the skies and the earth, he defends and he does everything with his decree and he controls everything. They said, mm, you made us so angry, Ibrahim. We have to tell your father. And his father was a very evil man too. So they went to his father, Azar, and they told him, look at what your son did. He broke all of our gods, our idols, what we worship. And he said, okay, I'm going to show you that I believe in these gods more than I, I love these gods more than my own son. Let's burn him until he dies. Oh, I know it's scary. But you know what Ibrahim السلام, did? He wasn't scared at all. Because he knew that the real true God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is going to protect him. And no one can harm him but Allah and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permits. And because he knew this, he made dua. And I'm going to teach you a dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you from anything if you say it and you know it. Okay? You might already know it. But I'm going to find out, inshallah, at the end of this episode. So they dragged Ibrahim and they told him, we're going to burn you. He said, okay, you can burn me. But nothing will harm me except if Allah permits. And he wasn't scared at all. You know why? Because he was with the truth. He was with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as they dragged him, they built this big, huge fire. They say, not a single bird can fly over this fire from how much smoke is coming out of it. And they say it was so big and so huge, they kept putting wood, they kept putting oil, and things that make it light up even more, until it got so big that they couldn't even come close to it. It was so hot next to it. So they had to put Ibrahim السلام, in a catapult. You know what a catapult is? That thing with an arm, they put something inside it, they usually put rocks in it, and then they let it go and it springs forward, right? And it blasts things to, to, to the front. So they put Ibrahim, little Ibrahim, who's a boy, 
He could have been 10, 11 years old. They put him inside a catapult and they said, we're going to catapult you into the fire. He said, okay, I'm not scared. And when they did that, they said, this is a sacrifice for our idols. We are going to show our idols how sincere we are. And Ibrahim is like, let your idols help you. My God is going to help me. So as they catapulted, they pulled it back. Ibrahim's father was looking at him. He was staring him down saying, you are such a disappointment of a child. Look at what you did. You brought mockery to this family. Go and burn until you die. And everyone is saying, burn him, burn him, burn him. And Ibrahim السلام, was just smiling and he said, Inna ma'ya Rabbi, Sayyidin. Allah is with me. He's going to guide me. So when they catapulted him in and he flew in the air and the people watched, he landed in the fire. And right before he landed in it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the fire, Kuni ya nar, bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim. Be nice and easy and peaceful and cool on Ibrahim. And that's exactly what happened to the fire. It became cool. So Ibrahim السلام, went into the fire and he just stood up in the middle of the fire and it was actually a little cool, it wasn't hot at all. And when the people saw him walking around in it, they said, oh my goodness, how is this possible? How can the fire not burn him? And he said, hey, God is with me and not with you. And God helps the one who believes in him. And he just walked out of the fire and the people were like, oh, oh my goodness, how is this possible? And as they walked out, they saw it as a miracle, but they couldn't believe it. So when he came out, the people looked at him and said, how did you not burn? He said, God made me not burn. Why don't you people understand? They couldn't understand. So his father told him, look, I want you to just leave here and don't talk to me anymore. Ibrahim said, God is going to guide me. Alhamdulillah, I'm happy. Dad, you saw this miracle in front of your eyes, but you still didn't believe. Don't you know that God is the one that made me not burn in the fire? They couldn't believe, subhanAllah. Because only the people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to believe will actually believe. We ask Allah to make us believers. Ameen. And Ibrahim alayhi salam just walked away and he made hijrah. He was in Iraq and that's where his father was and that's where the, the town he grew up in was. And then he moved to a place called Asham. And inshallah ta'ala, Ibrahim alayhi salam story is very big. It's a long story. So we might need the next episode and maybe even the episode after just to finish the story of Ibrahim. By the way, I saw some of your pieces of art that you sent me by email yesterday. The big boat, the Ark of Nuh salam, right? You guys are so good, mashallah. Don't forget to do your homework. Today, I have a special homework for you, okay? And don't forget, you're gonna send it to the email that we have right here on the bottom. Okay, it's epickids2020 at gmail.com. That's what I want you to use when you send it so I can present it to everybody. Today's homework is not a drawing, is not a piece of art. Today is a dua. Do you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you the way Ibrahim alayhi salam was protected? I'm sure you do. If you want this protection, I want you to memorize this dua. Are you ready to memorize it? Okay, say after me. Bismillah, alladhi la yadurru ma' ismihi shay'un fil ardi wa la fil sama'i wa huwa as-sami'u Al-Alim. Okay? And you can repeat this uh, in the video as many times, inshallah, until you memorize it. And what I want your parents to do, and you tell your mom or dad, 
record me saying this. Once you memorize it, I want you to record yourself and send me an email with your recording because I'm going to show everybody inshallah ta'ala and everyone's going to see you saying the dua, but not everyone. Only if you did the best. So make sure you memorize it good and your video is nice because I'm going to choose the best one and play it in the next episode, insha'Allah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khair. Salaamu alaykum.